103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, September 6th. It's about 11 a.m. And we're streaming live on Dread Pirate Higgs' uh, channel. And uh, maybe next week, if you're not listening to it now or if you're on a podcast and hear this, check out Dread Pirate Higgs' channel and you can watch us live. As usual, we have our co-host online, Wombat, with on us on the phone uh, or on Zoom. How are you? Wombat. It's a miracle. I can grow beard spontaneously. <laughs> ah! thanks, thanks to the miracle of electronics. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's great. And we have, uh, as mentioned, Dread Pirate Higgs with us. Hello. Hello. Arr, how are you? George. Hi. Red Leader. Hello. Uh, did, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religions, faith, God's holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling that you're not, the, or that you are the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's a streaming atheist call in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville? Has been for over 10 years. Did you That's know right. that one, bet? I mean, if you like teenagers, if you like ninjas, and you like turtles, this is the show for you. <laughs> so it's set in like rundown New York, and it takes place with four brothers. It's about four brotherly nope. loves. That's what this nope. whole thing is about. And they are matter ninjas, fact, but they're also turtles, fact, and they look like people, and they fight people. No, it's great. No. You got really off wonderful. on that channel maybe six months ago <laughs> thinking it was the, the atheist show, but it's not. We broadcast on YouTube now. We used to do it on TV, but uh, we switched over to live streaming. But we'll tell you more about how you can connect with that watch it and or maybe even be on the show after the mid-show break um if you'd like to interact with us during the show go to dread pirate higgs's channel or go to facebook and search for our digital free thought radio hour page and use the messaging function for that nice wombat what do you have for us today what hey topics? today we had a really really interesting topic we're going to talk about foxholes and not so much the the stereotype that there's no atheists in foxholes but in fact us being atheists, we know we're there every day. What can we do to get Christians to join us in the foxhole? That's the that's the. Topic so, what about what about the people who the Christians who say there are already Christians in, in foxholes? There are no atheists in foxholes. We're gonna go into that. It's gonna be a lengthy topic. We're gonna have a fun time today. But before we jump yeah. into that, let's go to mm -hmm. Dread Pirate Higgs with our weekly invocation. All right, I have a limerick. Mm. Are humans possessed of a soul? with heaven as its object and goal. But if it's not, this life's all we got. It is what we ought to extol. Oh, Amen. Amen. I really like these lyrics. I really like these limericks. Um, who, do, do, well, do I've, you I've make gotten into writing them now, so. So this is an original now. This is an original, yes. Dread Pirate with the original lyrics. Nice. Now, listen, all you got to do now is start writing these down. We can have, like, your own little fun book of, like, you know, invocation poems for, for basically anything. It's really Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Highly recommend it. All right. Or songs uh, if we put some music with them. Or songs if we put music to them. Don't tempt me. I got that ukulele in the background ready to go. It's, <laughs> it's burning up. It's burning up. Uh, speaking of which, Larry, how you been? How you been holding up? So how's been you been since last week? Oh, good. Um, being kind of retired. I'm uh, <laughs> just playing computer games all day. I turned 70 this summer. Nice. So, nice. Uh, with COVID, uh, home is a good place to be. So I uh, stay home and just play computer games. And now you're actually an avid TV. gamer. What is, what's your game of choice? Oh, I play WoW, World of Warcraft all the time. Nice. Um, I play also Wolfenstein. Um, uh, there's a good one called Just Cause 3 that I highly recommend anybody who hasn't played it yet. It's I played awesome. it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to control, too. That's a very technical game. I got some recommendations that I would I would love to give you and or gift you if you promise to try them out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're really good. They're really, really you great. You got my attention. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, George, no more arm brace. How are you holding up? Are you still stretching? What's going on? I'm stretching right now, this moment. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, my uh, 
Um, therapists are telling me my progress is great. Mm -hmm. I'm recovering from rotator cuff surgery. How's the New York Times doing? Well, uh, my, my here, okay. Um, I am located halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga, oh. and in the wilds of this, this rural place, my occupational therapist assistant actually reads the New York Times every day yeah. online. She has a subscription to it, which is, uh, I had to stop reading the New York Times when I was in school in New York because I was getting too upset oh. during, the Viet oh, it was during the Vietnam War, and okay. I was... I spent two hours on the subway every day reading the New York Times, and finally I couldn't stand it anymore. It so. almost sounds like New York Times for you is Twitter for me, because I I literally have just blocked that website entirely. I can't I can't go on Twitter.com without being upset about something immediately. Well, what I what I mean is is that I I think the New York Times is a very fine paper mm. with occasional lapses, you know, mm. but. But in general, uh, you know, I, I, I really like the paper and yep. and I had to stop reading it simply because the news was too upsetting. Yep. And I feel the same way about Twitter. I think it's a really good function. It's a good way of communicating, but I feel like it's taken over by what's the right uh, escalating people who just want to provoke extremists, things, extremists, trolls, racists. It's really, really bad. Dale. What's the what's the du jour? What's the poster du jour of today? Oh, I'll talk about that when you get to your subject. Oh, <laughs> this like is oh, 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 nice <laughs> visual aids. Nice. Okay. Oh, you okay. Guys okay. Are okay. Like it. Really start. <laughs> uh, but I would like to let everyone know that I've decided that I'm no longer an atheist. I've nice. decided <laughs> that, like the Scotsman, atheists or atheism is just not enough. Now I'm atheism 2.0, that's the militant oh. atheist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, you're, so you're the unpopular atheist. Basically. So you people who are just saying that uh, I see no reason to believe in God, or have that's no not enough. Yeah. You're not enough of a Scotsman. You got to be a militant like Krauss and some of our other <laughs> atheist leaders espouse. Oh man, all those well, white some, people. Yeah. Some would say what, what, like, just, just you're, being, you're recycling uh, Madeline Murray O'Hare. No, she wasn't enough of an atheist. Hmm. Yeah, well, she some people would say just doing enough. an atheist podcast is militant. Mm, it's true. And, you no, know, some people just say being an atheist is offensive. Little, yeah. Yeah. No, you've oh, yeah. got to you've got to call people to arms and stuff if you're going to be a militant atheist. I hear but, you know, I we're, hear, we're, we're working on that. Cool. We're working on it. Dread Pirate, how you been? I've been well. Um, yeah, doing good. Uh, keeping busy. I just bought a new car or a new car to me uh, yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, what's the car du jour of Canada? My mechanic. What's that? What's the car du jour of Canada? Like, what's your style? What'd you get? Well, I, I bought a 2007 uh, Audi. Oh, fancy, fancy, fancy. Very nice. The opposite of the inny. What's that? <laughs> is, that <laughs> no. is that the opposite oh, of the Larry, any? You're no. <laughs> you're I and I, I, you know, I love howdy it. any. I've tuned into the wavelength of the dad joke now. I, it, it, I, it, there's some really, really good stuff in there. Dread, yeah. I want to ask you, you want to talk about how can we get Christmas to join us in foxholes? Maybe we can talk about foxholes first. What do you mean by, what do you mean by the concept of a foxhole? Well, foxholes are those uh, sort of, uh, you know, secular issues, I guess, that, uh, you know, uh, are about making this a better world to live in. Hmm. And uh, rather than building a Christian nation, uh, building a secular nation, uh, because it's through the efforts of uh, and secularism that uh, all good things have come to pass so far. Uh, and uh, getting Christians to acknowledge that atheists are okay people. So it sounded like... So foxholes, in a sense, to me, was like, hey, when the going gets tough, 
atheists, even an atheist will be like, God, I need help. Or man, what can I do? I need to probably start praying. Like this is, I tried to pretend there was no God for a long enough time, but now that things are really, really difficult, I'm going to start praying and reaching out for God because I can't take this for myself. I'm going to do what the Christians are doing. Oh, things are much better. I should have been a Christian the whole time. Like that's what I hear yeah. when I say, when I hear, <laughs> that's what I hear when, I, when I'm told there's no atheists in foxholes. It's like when the going gets tough, you guys right. find God. Right. Well, I've heard it another way in that anybody who's seriously ill in the hospital reverts back to their religion, reverts back to God belief because so, their, their, their life is in danger there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Deathbed confessionals, stuff like that. I've heard like famous ones where it's like, Hey, you know, we took a drugged up Einstein when like he's on his death throes in hospice and is like and Darwin. Christianity. Boom. Yeah. Darwin too. is just like, Oh, we got him. We got him. We got and him. Hitchens. Yeah. Hitchens too. Oh man. Yeah. They've said that about Hitchens as well. Uh, it's unfortunate. But it's, it's a lie in order to protect their It's belief. a lie. You're spreading an internet rumor that is a lie. That and they called happen. it a lie. Good. Hey, lies aren't cool, guys. We got to stop them. But the idea is, you know, there have been atheists that die. There have been atheists who are good under pressure. I know I'm one of them. I've had experiences where it's just like, you know, I could waste my time praying for God to find my keys or I can find my keys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And, it, you know, uh, extreme cases, of course, like uh, there's always going to be extreme cases. But even like in the most mundane sense, like I I once yesterday was out shopping go into a store and I, and my wallet wasn't in my pocket. And in my head, I'm like, Oh geez, I've just been to two different stores. I don't want to imagine thinking that I've lost my wallet in some store randomly. Let me just <laughs> rationally think this out, retrace my steps, found it in the floor of my car seat. It's like, boom, there it is. Put it in my pocket, walk back into the car, walk back into the shop, continue my shop and continue my day. But I could have been like, Oh, I don't want to be a bad character, but oh God, please let me find my wallet. Please, please, right, please. Let me right. spend 15 minutes thinking. It's like, meanwhile, my wallet's just like, you can find me. Just come back to the car. <laughs> I've saved myself a lot of time by doing it. Yeah. Um, and what's, have, what's funny oh, is he never really answers the question verbally. Mm. I mean, if you eventually find your wallet, you just give him the credit, you know, saying, oh, he did that. He did that. So it, yes. Yeah. You know, it's nonsense. Would you say, you know, it's okay to pray to God? But it's always odd if he if he talks back. That's like the part where you should be like, oh, okay, there's a problem here. Dread, has there been moments in your life where you have been an atheist in a foxhole? Do you have an example of that? Well, um, atheist in a foxhole. Well, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, one of the things, of course, I'm working on is the sort of the the separation of church and state. So that's a foxhole I'm in. Yeah, and I think it's, it's in fight. the interests of all taxpayers on the mm. uh, secular level mm. that uh, those things are are kept separate. Yeah, um, you know, if people are concerned about uh, Islam, um, you know, taking over the world or whatever, Christians should be as concerned about that as well. Uh, and conversely, Muslims be concerned about Christians taking over uh, government. So I would say, like, if the Baptists got too crazy, people should be worried about that. If the Jehovah Witnesses got too crazy. Exactly. If, if the Third Street Pentecostal Union got too crazy or too powerful, <laughs> then the Fourth Street Church of Prophecy and Worship will be like, hey, hold on, hold on. My tithing yeah. shouldn't go to paying their Cadillac. Uh, well, you know, and, and there's a, I've, I've heard it said that, you know, like, uh, if, if, uh, if a state religion was to be adopted, mm. it's very likely not yours. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it would, so, even if it was, it wouldn't be by next week. It's just, you can't right. tease that yeah. many different so, people. So that's a foxhole I'm in. Mm. It's a good fight that you're into. Uh, has praying helped? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good Lots answer. Lots of past to my friend. Lots of past. Uh, Dale, I know you're sipping something. So uh, did you want to go into your poster or did you want to talk about like uh, a time where you've had a hard time and maybe got through it? Did you rely on the God to get you through it? Did you not? What was the effect? Well, I did look up foxhole on the, on the internet just now. I used, you know, the dictionary to get my definition. Mm -hmm. And I believe where the saying comes from is from World War I, okay. where you had a hole that you would dig. You would get in the hole to keep the bullets from hitting you. Wow. And if you were an atheist in one of those foxholes, believe me, I doubt, or rather, I doubt 
that you would have to encourage people to join you, what with the bullets spinging, spinging over their heads. You know what's interesting is so as a metaphor, as a metaphor, um, yeah, it gets you might get a little hairy, but that's where the saying comes from, of course. Hmm. So that's what I have to say about that. As a metaphor, I think it's kind of interesting because I would find that only atheists would be the ones digging holes. Christians would be the ones like, I'm protected by this all-powerful being who has me as his best friend. <laughs> I don't need no holes. Meanwhile, the right. atheists are like, this is, this, is, this is insurance policy for myself. Does anyone want to join me in here? And then when the bullets start flying, it's the Christians who jump in. It's like, hey. They have the armor of God, as it were. Thank God for this hole that just showed up out of nowhere. This guy, God put this atheist on this earth for me to teach him about him so that he would dig this hole so that I can spread my message to this person. Like it's all, you know, twisted. George, what do you got? No, no, I'm, I'm stretching. I'm not. George, it's your turn to answer the question anyway. Like, I don't have an answer. Fair enough, fair enough. Dale, I'm an organic that? atheist. I, you know, oh, yeah, that's right. That's I, I beg right. off. That's right. I, I keep forgetting that, George. Okay. Can I can yeah. I read this question then for you? Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Could you see value in being able to have like a thoughtful moment to yourself where you can think about how did I get myself in this situation? Can I talk to myself in the third person and try to figure out how did I arrive here? Try to figure out like the consequences of my actions and maybe like retrace my steps and figure out what I could do better. Oh, I always do that. Yeah, okay. seriously. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I do it to a fault. I, I do it too much, I think. Oh, um, you're a thoughtful person. In, what, what did I do wrong? How did I, how did I bring this drama upon myself? You know, that, that, that sort of thing. But um, uh, I, I, I don't have a religion to go back to, you know, to, to suddenly pray to. The, right. The closest thing I, the, you know, the closest thing I can say coming out of a Jewish background okay. is, and not as a religion, but as a, you know, as a cultural sort of thing. Um, I was once walking down the street in Brooklyn, New York, and I, I came upon a, a man on the, on the sidewalk, you know, with a, with a little table full of tiny Bibles. And he had a sign that said, free Bible to any Jew who will promise to read it. So I said, hey, that's, that's cool. You know? I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. You know, okay. I just sure. wanted to read the Bible, see what's in it. Yeah. So, so I promised to read it. You know? uh -uh. He gave me, he gave me this little pocket size Bible with, with sure. teensy, teensy weensy print in it. And, um, uh, as as I promised, I started to read it, and damn, I fell asleep. Uh, you know? Yeah, it's and, a hard book to read. You know, and, and 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 it's like every once in a while I say, "Gee whiz, I live in this Christian culture here in this country. Hmm. I ought to know what these people believe and read their holy book." And I start I open the Bible, and I fall asleep every time. I can't yeah. do it. It's I'm, I'm just unable to read the Bible. It's almost as if you need an infrastructure of people who George, get paid to read it to you yeah, every Jill. week. Dale, what do you got? George? Yeah. Watch your language, George. What did I oh, say? Oh, was there a wordy dirty? Oh, no. no I'm just fine. I didn't notice. Um, all right. One thing for George, uh, isn't the Old Testament uh, pretty much the same book as the uh, Jewish uh Torah, I think it is. Well, I, I forget. I was just looking that up a couple of days ago, and um, uh, it's like it is and it isn't. But but in in essence, yeah. In essence, it is. Yeah. What the? It's the Torah is 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 written in Hebrew. The uh, New Testament is written in a whole bunch of other languages. Mm -hmm. and consequently have to be translated from Hebrew into those languages. And most people say that when there is something always lost in the translation exactly. or probably gained when you consider the King James had a, uh, or King James had a reason, had a agenda for uh, translating it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's always an interesting thing. Uh, Del, do you think this is a good time to go into Dirty Dozen, or do you want to wait for later? Oh, yeah, foxholes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I, uh, and I have to be careful here of the way I say it. Let me put sure. it through in my mind. <laughs> Long ago, I was a stupid sucker. Okay. And uh, I joined <laughs> the military during uh, the Vietnam era. It was actually winding down at that time. Uh, but um, there were a lot of stupid people in the military, just like Mr. Trump says. Uh, and so stupid, in fact, that they used to use cartoons to educate us. There would be cartoon books for how to repair your Jeep. There would be cartoons on the wall, and some of them had the word balloons and stuff coming out of them, one person talking to another. And this one is how don't let the dirty dozen get you, which is a really ironic poster in that uh, it's showing you all the ways that your M16 can jam up from getting dirt in it. Mm. Uh, and interestingly enough, when the Viet M16 was first deployed, a little trivia for you, first deployed to Vietnam, the manufacturer told someone or claimed that it, the gun needed, uh, the, excuse me, you're not supposed to say gun, the rifle needed no cleaning. And consequently, they did not send any cleaning kits with them. So they jammed up like crazy. Mm. and uh, with a uh, little water and, and all that. So they put out this poster to show, to tell people to clean it and they passed out the uh, cleaning kits. For anyone that's uh, listening to this, it's a I'm picture, done. it's it's a cartoon picture of a guy holding a gun with a bunch of tips listed all M16. around him. It's not, a, it's not a gun. You're not allowed to say gun. Oh. There's one it's... thing you do with your rifle and there's another thing you do with your gun. According ah, to the military. okay, okay. <laughs> Like what? Like what's the most important tip on this thing aside from uh, what you should call this rifle? Like what's an important tip that's like on this this poster? What's an important what tip? Right, what's yeah? Like clean, what's, cleaning, what's one of them? clean the rifle bore. You take the thing apart. You get all the dirt out of it. You put it back together again. That's what this poster is talking about. Cool. So it's got some history. It's yeah, talking it's about the cool. different places the weapon can get dirty. Cool, cool. And so, it's a dirty dozen since there's 12 of them. See, it's a cartoon. I get it. I get it. There's like a joke yeah. in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, though, uh, atheists and foxholes. Dread, we were talking about how do we get atheists to join, or I'm sorry, how do we get Christians to join us in these foxholes? How can we show them that, like in this case of like George, where he, he has the ability to talk to himself and rationalize what he should do, consider his actions, be thoughtful, and he doesn't need a God component to get him through that. Uh, right. With my story of like, hey, I could find my wallet without having to rely on a God. Larry's examples, uh, Dale's service in the military, you can serve your country and um, you don't need to have a hardcore established, you know, uh, dogmatic point of view on the world you can you can you can contribute to society you can find your own wallet you can ask yourself good questions all without a god belief how can we advertise that to the religious side how i how what i did when i broached the topic in the first place hmm. i said how do we get these people to accept us and and i don't want I'd like for us to be able to address that a little bit because sure. um, where I'm coming from, as I understand it here in the United States, we are the most reviled, hated people on the, you know, in this country. It, wait, we're Americans are the most reviled people in this no, no, country. No, not Americans. That, that that atheists are. Oh, atheists are. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty high. So that's where I was coming from. Yeah, there's yeah. not a lot of protests for atheists <laughs> yeah you may not have seen it but dale raised his hand yo dale yes up? he did yes you might uh, might approach this subject from when atheists will not get into the metaphorical foxhole uh excuse me well christians will not get into the metaphorical foxhole with an atheist meaning they won't get rid of their beliefs well, you have plenty of situations where Jehovah's Witnesses, as you should know, uh, reject uh, blood transfusions that they are told will save their life and will, they will die otherwise. In other cases where uh, Christian scientists will reject medical intervention on their children. Now, when you allow your child to die, there is someone that is not going to be influenced, converted, or otherwise 
change their behavior because of some atheist saying, come join me because of my rational thought on God. Yeah. So it's probably uh, what you call up a rope thing. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, but it's also I mean, the chakra. It's, uh, go for it, Dale. Go for it. Go for it. No, I just said you are, you are up a rope. Uh, what do you call it? Throwing good, means worthless. Mm, okay. In vain. Uh, uh, Don't okay. try. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I was thinking, now what you oh. can do, and I'm not saying that any militant atheists are doing this, but what you can do is roll up in an unmarked van with individuals with their faces covered, no name tags or insignia, grab the people off the street, throw them in the van, and take them somewhere to be programmed. And now I'm not saying that militant atheists are doing this in Portland, but uh, I'm not going to deny it. I wouldn't think it would be the either. atheists doing it. I would think it would be the uh, the the religious right or the uh, the at least the conservative right. The or like conversion therapists and, and the Nazis, like uh, yeah. yeah, the hardcore. But I would Good. think that uh, well, actually, the, the would... uh, Homeland Border Guards have admitted yeah. to doing that. Okay. Uh, Dread, can you fill in on the idea of what um, would be good tactics or at least good advice for atheists to try to get Christians to have them join in foxholes? Now that we know that there's examples that um, secularists don't need to necessarily have a God belief to get the benefits of, like, say, prayer, what can mm. we do to advertise that to Christians? It's like, hey, you try not praying half as much, <laughs> or at least for your keys, half as much, and yeah. see if you still find them. I bet you still will. Well, one of our uh, one of our viewers here is, uh, has said uh, that what Ty has is what where you're talking about prayer, uh, the atheist version of prayer is mindfulness, sort of the Sam Harris thing. Um, it has been proven to help you introspect and stay calm. Prayer is a form of mindfulness, whether or not people believe God that helps uh, believe a God that helps them. Hmm. Um, so to answer your question, I just wanted to, to make, uh, to relay uh, his comment, but to answer your question, um, I think it's about, uh, just being genuine in your efforts to make the world a better place mm -hmm. and to not pay attention to whether or not a person is of some religious denomination or not. Uh, just, I mean, it's about a demonstration that you are a good person, that you sure. care about the world, that you care about uh, each other and mm. yourself, and that it is essentially just by, um, you know, modeling the behavior you want to see. I, and so that that would be my advice to any any uh, atheist looking to, uh, you know, uh, bring bring uh christians or any one of any kind of religious faith into a common a common effort just to build on top of that i think along with being able to be a a good standard for hey i'm trying to do the best i can for society there's a mutual benefit for everyone if we work together um it's really important that people know that you're coming at it from an atheist point of view because people need to know you're an atheist for that to to matter else they'll assume that you're just another one christian like them working in the same lanes that they are to get to where they need to go. If they're like, Hey, here's an atheist and he's working out with me and he's, and he's trying to make the world a better place. And he's a nice guy. The next time someone talks about an atheist, I'll be like, that's not true. Cause I know one and he's really cool or she's really awesome or she's my boss mm -hmm. or she's my coworker and she's really great. She's my sister. She's my family member. I right. think that's the value. Um, we have to make, we have to try to make it aware that we're an atheist. We have to not make it a taboo subject. It shouldn't be something that we are ashamed to say in the first place. And then from that point, when they see our behavior, when we're under pressure, they will then say, ah, okay, this guy, he doesn't have a God, but he's going through a hard time. Me saying, I'll pray for you may not even work. I'll probably just refrain from that. Let's just see what I can do to help this person as a person. And I don't need to throw in God. That's when you start to see people will really work for each other. Um, I have, I have had, uh, a friend of mine have a death in his family, right? And he had just gone up to, uh, like Ohio to, to bury his father-in-law. 
and he knows I'm an atheist, but I still, you know, reached out to him and I said, Hey, listen, I'm really sorry about this. I just want you to let you know, everyone at work still thinking about you. And like, he texts me back. It's like, man, you're like one of the only people who like, you know, for my job who like said that, thank you so much. That means a lot. And I was like, yeah, man, just take a deep breath and, and, and take the time off that you need to like, you know, be there for your family. And it's like, man, that means a lot to me. And I didn't have to be like, God has a plan for every soul that's being taken away from this earth. And he had to give me back the scroll of like, yes, God is good. It's like, no, I'm connecting to you as a human being and we're having a conversation and you know, I'm an atheist, but like, I don't have to put that in the forefront either. I'm just, I'm just saying genuinely how I feel. And I feel like that means a lot, particularly when he can go on and be like, atheists can be compassionate, nice people. And like, you don't lose that when you lose your religion or you don't lose that when you don't need a God anymore. I think that has value. Okay, guys. Well, oh, conversely, I, go for it. Conversely, I would say atheists can be nasty people too, oh, because we're just we're just human. So, yeah. uh, right before my surgery, I was in the supermarket <clears throat> wearing my mask, and a woman came toward me wearing her mask, Ooh. and she said to me, "Are you having a blessed day?" And I replied, "No, I'm not." <laughs> the words you can, you just be, flew out of my mouth you, you can know. still be a christian and not have a blessed day so you're all good you're all good <laughs> you're gonna have to get used to that you're in tennessee aren't you yeah, i sure is, am that is a common greeting here all right, all right. Yes. guys we are at the bottom of the half hour larry why don't you take all us right. out and this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Cool. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Anyway, if you're in, uh, with us, we, we have Wombat, we have hey. uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, Red Leader, and George. Nice. So uh, the next half of the show, we were going to start off by talking about what is good. And uh, that came to me uh, because I was having a conf uh, conversation with someone online and they said, uh, I said something was good or something was not good. And they said, well, how do you know what's good? God defines what's good. You know, so if you, if you say something is good, then you're saying that you believe in God, which is, you know, a red herring because there are things that are beneficial for mankind or things that aren't beneficial and things that are beneficial for mankind may not be beneficial for the planet or for animals or whatever. Uh, we need to talk about that. What is good? How do we know what good is? Would you mind if we handle that after we talk about the smash hit by Hathaway? Well, mm. well, Hathaway? What's Hathaway? Yeah. You know, he made the song that was baby don't hurt me. Don't yeah. hurt me okay. no more. Uh, that's what, right. is what, oh. is <laughs> what is love? What is love? Where is the love? Where is the love? Where is the love? love? Where is the, the love? love? The love. Okay. So we're going to go over some quick comments that we got from last week's show quick, and then we're going to jump into the idea of what is love good. from our audience. There you from go. our audience. Yeah, and this comes directly from my uh, YouTube channel. Feel free to leave a comment. We'll, we'll go over them in the next episode. Uh, so first one's from Abstract Activist SE. That's Nathan Ferguson, who just probably posted one of the best SE compilation videos from the Black Lives Matter protests straight from Portland. Uh, he says, uh, as a resident, moderate vegetarian, I would have loved to have been asked the questions that you guys were asking about whether or not plants have sentience. And I'm like, hey, we might invite you over on the show. You've been on the radio show before. Let's talk about that. Uh, Data's Trading Room says, I missed oh, yeah. the live, guys, but I wanted to watch just after the live had ended. And guess what? Dread Pirate was mute again. So I had to wait until Ty posted this one. Man, we got good fans who are just vibing for, for content from us. And thank you for that. So we will make yeah. sure that we have backup channels for this conversation to be posted and you will keep up on it. Eventually we'll and, have And I feel very disappointed that uh, I, I, for whatever reason, this is not being consistently streamed mm -hmm. where all the sounds and all the bells and whistles work. Uh, so I apologize to Thaddeus trading. You wouldn't be a Canadian if you didn't have to say sorry, right? We all know, we all know, we all know. We're good. Uh, Nathan Matthews says, red leaders, sobering comments are always appreciated. Calling it, what it is a great talk all 
And so, yeah, I felt really good about our talk last week. I think we hit a lot of points. Um, Anonymous says, what a great subject to talk about. By the way, last week's subject was why life is important. And Anonymous says, what a great subject. I was hoping you guys would talk about morality or preserving biodiversity. We might have that as our next topic. I think that'd be a really great scientific topic to cover. What can we do to preserve biodiversity? And is there a means for uh, secularists to advocate that in a really meaningful way? Because there's a lot of ideas of like, hey, this earth was made for, you know, us. Let's enjoy it. How do you, how do you peel off that mindset and realize, hey, we're all in the same kiddie pool together. Let's not pee in it. <laughs> Let's make sure this water stays clean as possible. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You can leave a comment for more Where's Love. Let's get back into it. Larry, what was the, the main topic that we're bouncing back into? Well, we were talking about what, what is good? What does good mean? And, and does good only come from God? You know, as a religious, a lot of religious people would say, matter of fact, the guy that I was talking to online was saying, how do you know what's good? You know, and if you say something is good, you know, God is good. So you're saying that you believe in God, which yeah. is not the case. So I wanted sure. to throw that out and get some other opinions on it. Cool. Uh, who wants to start? George? I, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, I know what I mean when I say something is good. It means I like it. Basically, yeah. that's it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's my own thing. You know, it's my own definition. I like peach coffee. I think it's the most wonderful coffee in the world. I'm it's good. Really peach coffee? Pete, P-E-E-T. Oh, isn't that dirty? Yeah. They're selling it in Tennessee now. You it's like dirt California. coffee? Huh? You like dirt, dirt coffee? Isn't no, 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 that's P-E-A-T. 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 Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> P-E-E-T. It's the name of a Dutch man. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm not a coffee guy, but that's cool. Alfred, yeah. P- Alfred Pete. In fact. Nice, nice, nice. And we can Great. buy it right here in Tennessee now. Hey, we don't advertise until they sponsor us. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Red Pirate, what's your idea of good? Well, I, I, you know, I, I was thinking about the, the other question that's often asked is, are things moral because God says they're moral? Or is moral something independent of that, any deity, regardless of whether it's a Christian Plato God or, or a Muslim Socrates. God or whatever? And yeah. so I think the same thing could be asked uh, with respect to what is good. Yeah. You know? I, I find that when I'm talking to a Christian, good couldn't be a very loaded topic because I could just say, hey, what's good in the sense of like pleasurable? But they'd be like, oh, let me throw this on the morality side. Now good is now a morality obligation statement. And you, are you just mm-hmm. doing things because they're pleasurable? Are you uh, a hedonist? It's like, oh, if you want to talk about good in the sense of morality, we can talk about like harm and what we can do to reduce harm. And I can define like stuff like that. So I always like to just mean like, what are we talking about? Is this a moral thing or is it just like a, 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 a mundane sort of like good thing, good qualities or like good practices for people in society? Dale, I'm going to throw this out at you. What do you think good is? Two things. One, in my book, I quote a nursery rhyme, which is, which is God is good with uh, one more O. The devil is evil with one less D. Uh, so as far as what y'all were saying, whatever God says is good is good or else he will stomp you. Mm. But I would like to respond to one of our uh, listeners who was said that uh, they thought that the, the life show was uh, enlightening or in- good. Anyway, uh, if this there, uh, Michael Shermer does an excellent uh, episode with uh, Dr. Carol, uh, why life is important it is uh, podcast number four on science, Michael Shermer's Science Salon. He goes into an idea of why do trees grow better when there's wolves in the Yellowstone. I like it. I like it. And the idea of an ecosystem and stuff like that. Yeah, just like... Well, the idea is that diversity, because we are... uh, have grown on... The world has grown on evolutionary basis. Mm -hmm. One life affects another life. Now, why is it if you get rid of the wolves in 1920 in Yellowstone that all of a sudden in 1990, you've got less aspen trees? Yeah, they actually changed the course of rivers. Like, I, I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. So, like, animals can, have, animals can have major impacts on the environment. 
uh, even like the the presence of wolves can change the uh, the path. The course of, of rivers. rivers. Times. Yep, the course of rivers. It's really really great. Um, highly recommended. But that's a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing that we don't have to put all the pressure on human engineering to figure out how environment should work. And so now that we have, Larry, now that we have ideas of good. Where do we go from there? Like, how do we measure that? How do we define it? Well, I was, I was going to weigh in after throwing out the, the question. Um, go for it. One thing that we find, uh, or I find when I'm talking to uh, uh, Christian believers online is that they equivocate. Uh, if you look mm. up good, like you look up faith, you'll find many, many different definitions of the word good. Sure uh, one of them talks about what George was saying, you know, good is the stuff that's good for me. You know, things I like, you know, they're good. Another thing is like uh, Sam Harris says, um, good is uh, what encourages human flourishing. Uh, you know, good for the planet, good for the person, uh, for society as a whole, or it could be good for an individual. But there's, they can't just say one thing is good, a good right. means one thing, and mm -hmm. that one thing comes from God without evidence or proof. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think it goes back to, I don't want to say this in a bad way, but there's, I feel like there's an effort in religious circles to reduce or not stimulate critical thought. And complex new words with nuances beyond good, like compatible or uh, relevant or, or morally sound or legal, like all of those things uh -huh. are good in different capacities and they have complex uh, weights that come with them. And it's easy. It's, those are hard to think about. So like, <laughs> cause sometimes critical thinking is really, really difficult or taxing to do, particularly if you have a busy yep. day or if you're worried about if you're going to die or not. So what you right. need is like one big character to just be like, Hey, I'm good. And whatever I say is good. And that works for me. And just add, add, just remove one. Oh, and boom, there you go. I mean, that works. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I'm not a fan of the idea of like, Hey, um, making things simpler is better. Um, I find like we are, I feel like, it's not necessarily a purpose, but what we're really good at is looking at really complex things, figuring out patterns and figuring out how they work. And it's such a wonderful thing to do with the time that we have on this world to try to understand this, this universe that we're in, which is amazingly complex. This is like the dream world to be in, in terms of like trying to understand stuff. There's just mysteries all around us. Mm -hmm. Let's take the opportunity to do it. And if we have to come up with more complex terminology to do it, go for it. But as far as like, a deep philosophical conversation on what the word good means. It's so contextualized based on what you're referring to that right. I'd rather just be like, let's just take good off the table. What frame are we talking about? Like, are we talking about morality? Cause we can talk about good morality. So are we talking right, about right. legals? Let's talk about good ethics, like stuff like that. I don't want to get <laughs> trapped in a weird conversation about a dumb word. George, what do you I, got? I, th I, th I think that this, this issue has gotten so complex in my own mind while we're talking about it. Nice. That, um, I mean, now to think about it, it's, it's like, um, what's the person's whole worldview where the concept of good is going to come out of, you know, and, and at this time in my life, and I'm a lot older than I look, um, at this time in my life, what I'm looking back on is to try to simply understand myself, mm. to understand my own worldview, yeah. and what is the con what is the structure of my own automatic thought process? Yeah, and go yeah. from there. Yeah. That's where I have to start. That's the stuff I'm into. Okay, I love that. So like, <clears throat> what is my worldview? Mm. Just to be able to understand that mm. and then to try to understand the worldviews of the people I've been intimately affected by yeah. and interacted with during my life. This is where I'm at at this point. So, mm. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry if I've led the conversation astray, but um, the concept of what is good within a person such mm. as, let's say, myself, mm. the only person I really know, is hard enough to know, you know. Yeah, Larry, I've been at it all my life. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't say, I can't say I know myself well enough. I, I'm just at the edge of it right now. Okay, Larry, you might enjoy this. Uh, you had said uh, Christians tend to equivocate, but I also feel like there's an appeal to mystery when, if they're asked, 
or if they ask you what is good and you have to take time to like figure out what they're going on. It's like, why do you think it's so hard? This is a simple question. Good is whatever God says. It's like, you just right. doing this mm-hmm. giant mystery. <laughs> Cause right. what is God? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Like the yeah. most complex thing possible. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, God so, is not an answer. He's a million more questions. He's a, it's a right. trillion billion. Exactly. Like there's, it's a, it's mm-hmm. literally a lifetime's worth of questions that are, right. that are going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if we can maybe nail this down, how about this? Let's just say, um, when we let's terms, let's talk about in terms of how we treat each other and we can say there's good ways to treat each other and there's bad ways to treat each other. Um, and I'm not even sure if the God from the Bible is a good example of how we should treat each other to be perfect. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But how do we, how do we as secularists or, uh, in, in general know how to treat each other and and in a good way how do we know that dread i'll throw this to you first how do we know how to treat each other in a good way if we are secular well i, I think it comes back to that platinum rule Ooh. um which which is the step up from uh, the golden rule okay um, it's uh it's just slightly phrased it's it's phrased slightly differently um, so that it's not uh, how uh, treating uh, others, uh, how you would like to be treated, but how others would like to be treated. Nice. You know, nice. Treating others like they would like to be treated. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it's just taking it a step up and, and being more empathetic, you know, and, 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 not, and, and being self-aware enough that you can include other people's awareness um, as uh, an extension of yourself, essentially. Cool. Yeah. Uh, George, I'm going to throw this out at you next. What, as far as treating people in a good way, how do you know if you're doing it? If you are in fact not religious, how do you know that you're treating people in a good way? First of all, I have to try to put myself in their shoes. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Dread Pirates Platinum Rule is a, I like it. I was going to say the word good. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, um, uh, yes, I, I like it. Um, And and it it has to be how I imagine that person would want to be treated because it's all I've got, except to take it one step further, which is to ask them if they are happy with how how I came back at them. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I, I have to use the tools that I have. Nice. I like it. Um, yeah. Dale, I'd love to get your opinion on my copper rule. It's not as good. Maybe it's not as good as the golden rule. Maybe it's not as good as the platinum rule, but I like it a lot. And the copper rule for me is don't be a jerk. Like, <laughs> hey, you don't have to be nice to me, but don't go out of your way to be a jerk to me. Right. So don't be a jerk. What do you think about that as a rule for me to know how to how to treat people? It's a good rule. I guess it's a good rule. I first I've heard of any copper rule, but there's my answer. Hey, baby. I'm oh, it's uh, go. Michael Shermer's podcast, episode four, Dr. Carol, Why Life is Important. Nice. Nice. Larry, what do you think? Yeah. Copper rule, don't be a jerk. Mm-hmm. Golden rule, treat that. Oh, yeah, I think all of those are good. Uh, one of the things that I'd add on to the pile is uh, the first part of the doctor's oath. Uh, what's the name of that oath? Hippocratic oath? Hippocratic oath. First, do no harm. So, you so know, if, no you, if you can think that what you're doing will do harm to somebody, either mentally, financially, physically, <laughs> uh, emotionally, uh, don't do it. You know, mm. do no harm. Do and no needless harm. That's That would be the bad part. But good would be, uh, like uh, Sam Harris says, you know, human flourish and what would help them to flourish in their life, to do the things they want to do, do the things that they they feel they're they're called to do by their own uh, being, as it were. I'm also going to throw this that crazy thing out because we have like these like you know makeshift rules that we put together. We have the idea of like empathy and being empathetic, as George has outlined. I bet you, if I look hard enough in the Bible, I can find almost word for word these rules expressed, or at least the call for empathy. But the thing is, the the God belief or the baggage of a God or a supernatural entity isn't needed to know that you should be right good to one another or not be a jerk to one another like Compassion you don't need... and em- empathy will get you a long way 
Yeah, almost exactly the same place with less weight. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have more energy by the time you get there. Yeah. And so I find value in the idea of like, hey, there's no monopoly that Christianity has on being a decent person. Like this is this is or any basic religion stuff. Yeah. Or any religion. That's very true. Very true. Mm-hmm. I had I this might be a random thing. I'm just going to throw this out here. I was thinking for a long time about how um, conservatism tends to be in toe to toe with religious ideologies such that it's harmful for like progression in like, you know, gay rights or even like relationships, <laughs> like interracial relationships, women's rights, stuff like that. Right. But then I look at countries that are known for not being, you know, religious, like uh, a lot of ca- uh, countries in like Asia, Japan was one I was Scandinavian thinking of countries. Scandinavia is, is, is also a special unicorn because they, they are very progressive, yet they have a state church, right? Like yeah. which, they have like, a state doctor. supported by tax dollars, which is surprising. Yeah, which I don't know if how they feel about it, but they use the churches as like rec centers. Like it's, it's mm. completely different mindset over there. Whereas in Japan, yes. not a lot of Christians yet it's very hard for gay marriage to be accepted. Very little racial integration. Like it's very much like, Hey, you, you have to fit this form factor. You either fit in the subway or you don't. The sink is one foot lower than it would be in an American house. You have to deal with that. Like you're either Japanese or you're not. (laughs) It doesn't seem like being religious means that you aren't an empathetic person, like one-to-one. In fact, you could be religious and empathetic, or you could be not religious and very unempathetic. So the call to humanity is one that, that reaches out to all people, regardless of their faith or lack of faith. And that's something we should remind ourselves of, because it's very easy to think that, oh, just because I'm an atheist, I have all my other problems solved with regard to how to treat people. No, you just got one answer for one question. And that's whether or not you believe in God and it's no. And you still have to work hard to be an empathetic human being after that. Very true. That's my point. That's my, my two cents. Guys, we are heading out towards the end of the show. But before we do that, I want to throw out some SE tips. Um, I had SE, by the way, is a like Socratic examination. It's a great way to talk to people about what they believe uh, typically about hard, hardcore beliefs that they might have and have a conversation about how they arrived at their belief in a way that doesn't trigger them defensively or, or make ego get involved in the situation. And I had a, uh, an, a four hour conversation with a contractor who came to our job to, to repair an instrument. And while we were waiting for the instrument to warm up, it's a long sequence. We just started talking about God because <laughs> he brought up that he wasn't talking to his sister for like 12 oh, really? years because she decided to be gay and she doesn't know why he decided <laughs> to get gay and brought his, her wife to his house and, and have a fuss over it when it disagreed with his lifestyle. I'm just like, what is this? What is this conversation? Let's just get straight to the straight to the foundation. And we ended up going to God. We ended up going to faith. We did, you know, all the basic classic stuff's in Essie, right? And <laughs> found out by the end of it that, you know, he has no reference for what it would take for him to recognize if he was wrong. He's just absolutely confident that he's right. And he's using faith as a crutch to, like, just justify the amount of time he spent in believing in this God. It's just like, hey, what else do I have? I've spent so much time doing this. And, and I think he, that was the recognition at the end. He was very happy that he had the, co- the talk. But on my side, I still had work to do after that day, after a four-hour talk. I, that was still the first day of my work week, and I was exhausted all the way up until now. And this was like a, a six-day work week for me. I just did an overnight wow. trip yesterday. I would say if you're doing SE, you owe it to yourself not to tie yourself out. And that five-minute timer works for you, too. <laughs> Socratic, is, is that Socratic examination? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or shrewd epistemology. Don't tire yourself out when you're doing it because that might make the conversation go poorly, but it also isn't good for you. And it's a conversation. You should both be trying to get stuff out of it. And if you're getting exhausted, you can back out to you. Just be like, Hey, I think that's as good as we can get to for right now. I just want to get back to work. You know, it's totally fine to say that. Dred, do you have any um, random street epistemology tips that you might've learned? Off the top of my head. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. You are teaching a class on it, so you might want to get good at that. You, <laughs> you, you might want to get like warmed up on it. Uh, for Larry, you actually have your own style uh, I, that I really appreciate with your SE, and that you you are willing to throw in counter apologetics and classic argumentation into your style as well. Do you have a hard time balancing everything, or do you know which 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 
base to pull from? Which bucket to pull from? No, I'm a creature of habit. You know, when somebody says something, I, I reach in and grab the response that I've habitually used. But if I ever get in a corner, then I, I, I re rely on a Socratic examination and talk about their methods, yeah. about how they reach the conclusion that they're touting. Nice. But generally, you know, it's a mix of both. That's good. That's good. For me, I like the counter apologetics too. I like to understand why they believe it rather than try to like pick it apart. I'm like, how right. did you get there? What the hell's going on here? What is this? What is this guy? Right. And people say, you spend too much time on this. Like, but that's, that is what I'm trying to learn from this. Like, I really do want to understand like everyone's personal relationship with this, you know, being no one can really talk to. It's very interesting for me. Anyway, we're, if you want to see talks like that, I would recommend personally, uh, you check out a new YouTube channel called Quinn questions on YouTube. I'll put a link in it in this description. He's a new SC artist, uh, doing his stuff out of LA black dude. Let's go <laughs> more black representation in, in this, in this community. It'd be great. That's right. But, uh, yeah, really, really cool guy, uh, has a really friendly approach and just sits up at a park. He's doing his talks as of like now, like he has the, the Corona bass, Corona mask, uh, Corona COVID face wow. mask on mm. and stuff like so that. So he's doing it in public. He's doing it in Not public. In, he's like six feet away from people who aren't wearing face masks. What are you going to yeah. do? What are you going to do? Right. Uh, <laughs> but he's, Tyrone, Tyrone he's where, is, where is he located? He's located in oh, LA, oh, LA, California, LA, California. Okay. Yeah. yeah. La La Land. Yeah? yeah. Or the LA. Not area. like he's in Montgomery, Alabama or something. Oh, uh, yeah, it's true. Like, or Louisiana. Right. It's like LA, Louisiana. Anyway, uh, highly recommend you check that out. And I'll put the comment. So, what is it? Ooh, what's it's this called? Quinn Questions. It's a SE uh, conversation by a guy named Quinn. And he's a black dude that does Quinn Questions. Quinn Questions, yeah. Q U I N N, and then Questions. I'll put a link in the description. There's no way you can miss it. Okay. Dread Pirate, what do you got? Well, you can check me out on Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E, on YouTube. And uh, we stream this show live at 8 a.m. PST or PDT, Pacific Standard Time, uh, every Sunday. Nice, nice, nice. Dale, you have it. You, could you tell me the name of that podcast one more time and which number I can look for it? It's Michael Shermer's podcast. Michael Shermer is the one of the founders and editor of Skeptic Magazine. Nice. Uh, it's podcast number four of Science. The podcast is actually named Science Salon. A whole bunch of very, very smart people talking about very, very smart things one episode at a time. It's episode number four. And it is why you should be concerned about butterflies or wolves or Bees. giraffes, why Bees. those things can affect your life. Right. Yes. Also, I would recommend going to Wikipedia or one other source and look up Socratic examination and how it was done in Rome so that people know what the, uh, what the uh, ancestors of the present street epistemology is. Nice. Yeah. Highly nice. recommended. Yeah. George, what do you got? Also, I looked at your, uh, I looked at, uh, to plug your uh, YouTube thing, I, I looked at one of your talks in, on a stage with the, wow. the three state thing. There. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Uh, George. Well, I, I just want to tell everybody to remember in this context of goodness is to remember to be good to yourself. I like that. Yeah. Mental health. Absolutely. Be your own best friend. You are your own best friend. My, my boss always says, make sure your physical, mental, and spiritual health is good. And I keep reminding him, what do you mean by spiritual? He's like, oh, I just mean being good to yourself. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Make yourself be known. My mental health is making sure that you know that I think spiritual health is <laughs> All right. Uh, Larry, take us out. No, you haven't put your, uh, your, your links up. I would like it if you guys check out Quinn Questions rather than check out my stuff. You're probably if you're seeing this, you're probably even already on my channel. But check out Quinn Questions. I really okay. understand it. So is that QuinnQuestions.com? No, no, no. What? I'm going to put the link in the description, George. Forget about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we're getting down at the bottom of the hour. We should probably log out or yeah. quit. Yeah. Uh, just as a reminder, Dale's book, uh, which is. Uh, was it Jesus, how Jesus did it? Pieces of silver. Um, 
I can't remember the full name of it, but find it at howjesusdidit.com and read it free online. It's it's a great book about how Jesus free. did his miracles. Yes, free. It's free online. Read it online. Uh, be sure to visit my blog at digitalfreethought.com for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, by the way, my book is called Atheism, What's It All, What's about? It all about? It's available on Amazon. And if you're having trouble leaving your religious beliefs behind, I recommend going to recoveringfromreligion.org, uh, and they'll they have many resources to help you out there. Uh, if you have a question for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll try to get to them in the future shows. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified for the new episodes as they are posted. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it and enjoy your life. This program is pre-recorded and will be broadcast on Wednesday, September 9th at 7 p.m. on WOZORadio.com. Thanks. For another Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. See you then. Say bye, everybody. We'll see you bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Cool.